So um, I just wonder, like, um, if there's a way to um, unmute when I'm not speaking, if I'm speaking through the phone. I guess there is, huh? Let me just uh, try to see if I can do that. I have the option to mute you, Isumi. I don't know if you have the option as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm trying to like um, see my phone interface. Um, um, okay, I'll put the, um, yeah, I think I see the icon. Vengo de una empresa de internet. En la ciudad. So hello everyone. Um, uh, we seem to have um, um, a substantial number of the Chris team members joining. So um, let's start. Um, sorry, you may have um, hear some like uh, extra um, sound uh, from my background because I'm joining by phone today. Um, joining from unusual environment, um, irregular environment. But I'm able to see the screen. So let's start with the confirming who's here. So I see. Um, Andre, um, Jolie, Michael, um, Nirani. I think these are, uh, and um, did I say John? So I see John joining through the phone as well. And of course, um, I see well, I see her man's um, name, but I don't, I don't know if he's here with us or like somebody from the NRO secretariat so joining us uh, on his behalf. So I think uh, these are the members that I see are uh, joining from the Christian. 
Christine, and of course, welcome to others who are not the Christine members, but joining as a service. So um, let's uh, start uh, immediately. Um, the purpose uh, of the, this call is to focus on our comments to the CWG stewardship domains proposal. Um, while we might have, um, if we have extra time, it would be nice to have a little bit of the update on the GAO response, uh, as well as the meeting that we had with the um, NROEC. We did have the right uh, 17 meeting last week, but um, I would like to defer this update to the uh, regular call because I don't uh, recall anything um, that is urgent which needs to be discussed at this call today. So that's the general um, idea that I have for the agenda. And um, uh, oh, welcome, Herman. Thank you for joining us from uh, Singapore. And uh, let's see, does anyone else want to discuss anything else apart from what I've just shared? I see no hands. So um, let's go immediately to um, to discuss about how we're going to respond to the named proposal then. So um, this is a general status update. I've shared a draft of um, our response, and basically the major point that I've raised is related to this how the legal arrangement with the PTI. So how this uh, PTI is going to affect our SLA exchange, whether we're going to do with the, with the ICANN or the PTI directly, and what will be the implications. Uh, the second is related to PTI board. Uh, we, we, I observed that um, it is not clear what its role is and how much we want to be involved in this. And the general position that I have um, written for our draft response is that we really want and uh, would like to request the minimum role um, for the PTI board. It's just for the legal arrangements necessary for the PTI to be set up. And this is not a part of the proposal that um, that is um, included in our proposal. The third uh, and uh, fourth point is related to our CSC and the review team. So we would expect the CSC to focus on the service level of the names functions, and we already have the review committee uh, to, to provide advice on the service level on the numbering functions. And the review team, well, I think that several of us have observed some ambiguity on the role that it will be um, providing, which I also share this observation as well. But basically, um, regardless of ambiguity and further clarity, I think, um, again, this is not something that uh, we have identified in as a need in the numbers proposal. So we really would uh, be requesting and expecting this uh, review team to be focusing on, on the names-related issues. Um, so that's the thing related to the CSB and the review team. And lastly, um, on the intellectual property rights um, uh, related issues. It seems that um, the names proposal is saying that um, the, the uh, intellectual property rights will be transferred to PTI. Now, we're not very sure if they simply mean it's the licensing of its use or if they mean the ownership. Uh, so there needs to be more clarity on that. And if they actually mean the ownership, the PTI will be, be, will be the owner of, um, of intellectual property rights instead of having the license to use these, um, these, um, these like trademarks and um, uh, things like this, then we, we actually observe incompatibility with the numbers proposal where we believe that uh, the community should actually own, the three operational communities should um, uh, own this uh, intellectual property rights uh, related to the IANA. So that's uh, uh, an overview of um, the draft that I have made. And, um, and on this, I would like to share um, three points that has been raised. Firstly, um, I have went a little bit far, far into uh, describing the possible direction on the PTI board, saying that uh, um, one desirable direction could be that the, uh, the board will be constituted by the staff of the IANA. And I see that uh, Bill feels that this is um, you know, stating it, it a little bit far, and we really want to do this. So I, I, I think this uh, point is uh, fair. Uh, I simply raise this as an example. 
our own way of expressing it, we would be expecting the absolute minimum um, structure and the role for the PTI. And so it doesn't have to, we don't have to go into the details of um, what exactly you know what exactly should the composition of the PTI board should be at this stage. So I very much support the suggestion uh, by Nurani that uh, we just state this general position and not go into the details of the specifics of um, the composition of the PTI board. Another thing that I'd like to um, I observe, uh, which was raised by Bill, was that um, I have stated that in our SLA, um, oh, sorry, I think I didn't raise the point about the budget. Because in our SLA, it says the fixed, we will be, the RIRs will, will be paying the fixed cost uh, to the IML function operator, that we don't, uh, uh, we, we are not interested in getting involved with the budgeting of the iron operations and things like this. But uh, it is true that, as Bill has pointed out, it doesn't go into this details of specifics in our SLA. Um, so it, we're not going to be accurate in saying that it already says in our SLA that we'll be paying fixed costs. On the other hand, we would, I think I observe our general agreement on the meanings that uh, we would like to explain our intention on how this SLA should be implemented. So while it may not be described in exact words in this way, we would be expecting that uh, we will be paying on the cost uh, basis, and this will be the arrangement between the RIRs and the INA functions operator. So as long as this is agreed and reflected in the SLA, then we don't really have to worry so much about how the, they will manage the bad budget of the iron operations or um, things like this. So I think these are the additional things that need revision in the draft that I have sent. And um, and I'd like to open up for comments on anything else that I would like to raise. So I'm not seeing any hands from anybody. So hands, yes, please, Nurani, please go ahead. Thank you, Simon. I think you summarized it really well. I don't have much, uh, I don't really have anything to add to uh, what you have uh, said. I found it very useful too with uh, Michael's uh, clarification in the latest mail he sent um, just in the last half hour. So thank you very much, Michael, for that. that, that I think we solved the issue of um, the budget and the fee. Um, of course, as, as part of the Chris team's uh, feedback on, on the, um, the numbers communities, um, or sorry, the RIRs SLA with, with, um, as part of the numbers community proposal, we might want to add this um, as part of our feedback that maybe it can made, be made clearer that we're talking about this fixed fee, um, as, as Michael suggests, in, in the sense that it would be a, a cap per year. Um, apart from that, I don't, I, um, I very much appreciate all the comments made so far, and I don't really see any conflicts. Uh, I think we've jointly improved this document. I can't really see any outstanding uh, conflict in the discussion so far. Yes, thank you, Nurani. Um, that very much matches with my observation as well. So I don't like go. Um, so the suggestions for improvements that we made, and I think um, no objections observed, and um, so every much everyone is pretty much in agreement with the. the uh, what has been suggested. So I think the next steps will be just improve, reflect the improvements on, based on the suggested uh, text. So um, I think I have already reflected the point that you made, Nurani, which, is, which I found was very good, that uh, we, we are just expressing this on behalf of the Christian team and not, not the whole numbers community. So we have invited uh, the numbers community, the wider numbers community to comment directly uh, if they have anything to say on an individual basis. And, um, and this is basically um, you know, making comments as a team. So this has been reflected in any further suggestions and edits will be um, 
would be welcome, and uh, I, I, I'd like to join um, Nurani in uh, thanking Michael for this uh, helpful comment about the um, the fee. So what I'd like to do is, I mean, at the beginning I was thinking maybe if we receive many comments, maybe it would be useful to have like um, somebody to hold the pen officially, like uh, how Michael has done uh, for to compile a proposal. Uh, but um, I think at this level, I'm pretty happy to reflect all the comments and send the revised to. Uh, um, the um, draft. I think people have uh, actually sent in very specific uh, comments, including wording on the edits. So, um, if everybody is okay with this approach of me with incorporating the comments which has been made and then we send it to the Christine list, um, I, I'd be happy to do that. Alternatively, um, if Michael would be willing to to take a pen and um, re reflect all the comments, that would also be really helpful. Um, so, um, hand, I see hand from um, Andre. So please, Andre. Thank you, Zumi. Well, this is not so much a comment on the process, which I think is, uh, I, I agree with we, what you said. It's more about how we incorporate the comments and what kind of general message we want to send. I think we want to accomplish two goals with this response. Um, and I wonder there is, might be a third. Let me just enumerate the first one, first two. So the one is to re restate our position regarding some of the issues. I think we're doing this very well with regards to SLA and the uh, ability to choose IANA operator, this kind of stuff. Uh, the second objective is to clarify some of the elements that were kind of, you know, sketched in the CWG proposal so we can make more informed decisions further. I think it's not our goal to modify the CWG proposal, right? So we're not commenting on the proposal per se, we're just looking at the overlaps. I think that probably needs to be more clear stated in the preamble. And another thing that I wanted to say that I think it's equally important for us to get some support from our own community on those comments, not in a formal way, because I think we will not, we shouldn't expect this kind of feedback coming in at such a short notice. But I think for our own kind of understanding where we are on the right track, uh, I hope we intend to send these comments to the IANA transfer mailing list and have further discussion as a parallel thing to sending these comments to the CWG uh, group. Because I think we need to continuously uh, recheck support of our community for the, some of the statements we are putting together. And this is not so much for the CWG, this is more important for us, for our own work. Excellent point. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with both of your points, Andre. So on first, to, on the second point that you made about we, we would need to like uh, see if we're on the right track on making comments. Um, so this is exactly what Nurani and I also discussed. Let's share this on the, the global list um, uh, tonight. Um, that was the next step that uh, we we had in mind. So we will submit this to the um, to the main um, um, stewardship uh, group. And then once we've done that, as long as we, we've done that, then uh, let's share this um, on the global list. So we would like to target uh, during this, um, well, tonight with CET, so maybe also still tonight um, under the UTC. Uh, we can discuss about what exactly would be a good time uh, later. Um, and so then when we do this, when we actually share the comments from the Chris team, we can actually like uh, ask ex explicitly for um, for the community's view whether they support what we say. So I think that may be one, uh, one way we can address your second point, Andre. And um, regarding the first point that we're not actually trying to change anything from the proposal. This is another very good point. At the same time, I would like to emphasize that uh, you know, there are a few points that they haven't decided yet. So the arrangement about the PTI, this is something that they have come up with. So we, we want to be respectful of the idea that they have come up with, and they have been respectful of our proposal as well. So I think as long as it works for us, we, we really want to be respectful for the, um, for the elements of the proposal that we are, you know, the names community has come up with. But there are like uh, things such as the PTI board, or for example, the involvement of the review review team from other operational communities. This is something still like gray, 
And those are the kind of things I think it would be helpful for them to hear our feedback on what would be desirable at this stage. Because I would assume that uh, once they fix the proposal and submit to the ICG, and then we start saying, hey, we don't like this, then it's like in nobody's interest. So I think this is something that we can actually um, be more proactive in expressing our direction, which I believe our current draft is. is. So, um, so as an, uh, to summarize action points related to Anders point, on the first point, uh, let's reflect that we don't intend to change any elements of the proposal and uh, we're just like making observations in comparison to the numbers and also on the point that it's not being clearly uh, defined the direction on the, on the CWG, we just share what we think would be helpful on the numbers um, uh, from the numbers perspective. So this is something that we want to reflect uh, in addition to the current draft that we have. The second point, um, to have a clear and explicit uh, community support, we will send this out as long as we, as soon as um, we submit um, the proposal to the CWG uh, on the global um, IANA expert list. And then we ask, we call for expression of support or like um, anything that they think is different from um, the individual community views. So, yeah, I see a comment from Andre. We expect confirmation and clarification um, on the, the um, direction forward on the CWG named uh, proposal. That's what I think you, you meant, Andre, on the chat by we expect confirmation and clarification. So does anybody have any comments uh, related to these two um, points of uh, way forward? I'm not seeing any hands. So I would um, interpret this as no objection and uh, people are good with the way forward. So um, we'll, we'll proceed in this way. So another point that I want to uh, clarify is more into the detail of, okay, what exactly would be a good time for us to send this uh, to the, um, submit this to the CWG name. Um, so I would like to target tonight's um, UTC, UTC tonight. And uh, since Michael has uh, very helpfully and kindly uh, volunteered to uh, hold a pen, um, how how much time do you think um, you need, Michael, to to share this back to the Chris team, and then maybe we we will give additional maybe uh, two hours buffer for the Chris team members to comment on that, and then once we're done with that, I'll I'll submit this uh, to the CWG names on behalf of the Chris team. So, for example, would um, yeah, maybe um, Michael, would you be able to share, like, a, give us a brief idea on how much time you would need for this? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that I can devote uh, some time to this, this morning um, to be able to get that out there so that you all can comment. Um, it's about 9 a.m. Uh, East Coast time here in the U.S., and I could have something by lunchtime by noon. I don't know if that's later than you all had expected, but that would be, I guess, um, Four o'clock UTC or four p.m. UTC, and then if you want to wait for a couple hours for um, for comments, then any final comments I could go ahead and incorporate in, and perhaps we could shoot for a posting or a sending time at around um, perhaps six or seven UTC. I don't know if that, that works for you. Yeah, that works for me, and um, so let's see if anybody have any issues with this uh, rough timeline. So Michael will be sending out a rough draft around 16 UTC, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we would have um, two hours to, to respond to Michael's comments, so that will be uh, until 18 UTC. So maybe we want to target around roughly 19 to 20 UTC to send to the uh, CWG um, uh, stewardship. Um, and then we forward this response that we have submitted to the global list, um, the global numbers list, uh, so that uh, people see what uh, we have responded. Let's also encourage others to, to respond or submit comments if they need on an individual basis. 
So I see no hands related to this, and uh, just as a you know, a clarification on details on how we can work together, Michael. Uh, so the point that Andre has raised uh, about like we want to be clear that we are just uh, not expecting any changes in the names proposal, but we expect confirmation and clarification and um, share our observation from the numbers on the helpful way forward. Uh, would you be able to like uh, incorporate uh, this language uh, based on this spirit, or would you like uh, perhaps um, some of us to draft language and then send it to you? Um, either way works for me. More efficient. Okay, yeah, I mean, I then, think uh, it would oh, be really sorry. helpful if you could just. Oh, sorry. Please, Michael. Oh, I was going to say, for, um, either way works for me, but for efficiency, though, I can go ahead and draft it so that he can, uh, I can send it out just overall in one document. So um, if anybody has any specific uh, language or um, specific points that, um, you know, language-wise you want to make, uh, feel free to send it to me, but, um, and then I can incorporate all into the one, one document. But I'll, I'll take the idea that I'm going to go ahead and just draft that, that piece as well. Excellent, Michael. That will be really, really helpful. So, like, if anybody have any like strong feelings about it, it should be expressed in this way. Then please send this to to Christine Rizzo uh, before, um, maybe like um, maybe one hour before um, 16 UTC. So, like, uh, before, uh, um, maybe before <laughs> that would be like 13 UTC. So that Michael can incorporate uh, your feedback. So, um, thanks uh, very much, Michael, and I think this is helpful. So. Uh, I think um, we're pretty much well covered uh, related to how we are going to handle um, our public comment to the main's proposal. Um, unless anybody else wants anything you'd like to check um, or comment on this. So I'm not seeing any hands and uh, so I see a couple of uh, members expressing like their thanks to Michael. Of course, yeah, very helpful. So um, let's then let's actually move to another agenda. Then um, this is um, the response that uh, we have um, uh, provided to GAO. So I, I have already um, submitted this uh, response to GAO, as we have seen uh, from the update I uh, have also made to the global INA Expo list. And uh, it's, it's very much based on what we've been like uh, sharing. You run has been circulated on the Christine naming. But uh, there are two additional questions um, that uh, we have received to GEO, which is uh, different from the standard template that they're circulating to um, all um, other people that they're interviewing. And um, the one is, um, so these are uh, questions very specific to the numbers. The one is related to the role of the ASO. I think this part is very much like simply a matter of explaining the role and the fact that um, our situation is different from ICANN and we actually developed the proposal, not within the ICANN form, but we have a separate form facilitated by the RIR to do this, plus this uh, our PDP um, that the IANA will be basing its uh, distribution to the RIR. It's very limited and so global, and um, but the frequency and uh, its, its the role is, is limited to only the case when IANA distributes uh, to the RIR. So those are the things that we have um, focused in our response to this uh, first additional question. And the second additional question that we have received, which would be uh, more, I would say, interesting, you know, uh, is that, um, and this is like, I think many communities outside the numbers communities are interested in this. How uh, easy or how difficult it is for, um, for the RIR to either terminate or at the time of the renewal of the SLA, not choose the existing INA operator. So how easy it is and or difficult it is for this. And the reason for this uh, question is that there are concerns about if it's very easy for us to change the INA operator, then it might just destabilize it destabilize the IONA functions uh, on the numbers at least. Um, given that uh, we're saying we're happy with the current service that ICANN is providing. So I think this is uh, a point that uh, we should be able to exp explain very well. 
so how we have um, um, drafted this response was um, was firstly um, we're just simply um, talking about the possibilities. So we don't have any concrete plan to want to change the IANA operator uh, from ICANN at this point. Um, so we want to be clear about this. And the second point is that we're actually not um, proposing anything which makes it easier for us to change the IANA operator from what the NTIA is uh, doing today in their contractual arrangement uh, with the ICANN. So firstly, on, on termination, actually, um, we have uh, specified in the SLA that uh, termination uh, will be based on, on the impact on, on the service level. So if there's failure to meet the, service, the expected um, service level, then we will, um, we, we will change or terminate the contract within the fixed term. So this is one point. And another point is, so at the, at the end of the, um, the contract term, and when we are renewing the contract, are we going to just uh, give the choice to um, the existing IN operator, which is ICANN, uh, or are we just are we going to make it open for other um, other organisations to be able to bid in this uh, this contract? And again, in NTIA contract today, this is the, they are open it opening it up for bidding. And so we, I, we put exactly the same condition um, in our SLA, that we just open the possibilities for the others. So that's how we have uh, described in our response to the GAO. And um, so um, there were some uh, questions and clarifications on the CRISP team uh, related to this. But, uh, as I explained, I think this is uh, in line with what is described in the numbers proposal as well. So while we have already submitted the comments, I would um, I would like to see if there are any um, any comments uh, related to these additional points that we have made. So I see no hands, um, and so. And in addition to what we have submitted, there may be certain like links or information sharing. For example, the link on the NRL page where it describes the difference between the global and the regional policy. So maybe these are the things that we might want to follow up as factual on you know what we do today. But um, so other than that, I think uh, I think we're pretty much done with the response to the GAO. So thanks very much for um, all those who have uh, given as the feedback on the draft that uh, we have to, uh, Luani and I have submitted. Okay, so I guess we're, we're good on, on, on the GEO response. And another thing that I wanted to um, update, um, share with you all was um, the meeting that we had with the CWG chairs and as well as the meeting that we had the, with the NROEC uh, during the right, um, right week. So um, maybe first go with the uh, meeting with the CWG chairs um, because it's related to the response that we'll be uh, submitting uh, to the group. Um, so we had, as we know, we had two meetings. So the first meeting, I think I gave an update after the first meeting that um, the chairs have given us a, a good picture on the elements of the proposal that might affect the numbers community. And then uh, what we have done in the second meeting, uh, which took place last week, uh, Nirani and I joined um, from the numbers community. And uh, from the names, they have the, the two chairs, um, Jonathan and uh, Lisa, as well as um, the ICG members um, that is representing the names community. So they were there as observers. And um, actually what we have shared with uh, them is uh, a potential point that needs their attention. It's very much reflected in all the points that I have listed in my draft to, um, to the public comments uh, from, from the CRISP team. So I don't think there's anything um, like that I have not really written um, on the public comments that we have uh, 
discussed uh, with the named uh, chairs on our reservation on the proposal. Um, and as a next step on the uh, intellectual property rights, we feel that uh, this is something that we really want to uh, have the three operational communities, including the IETF, to discuss this as a way forward on what would be a, a good um, uh, um, um, solution uh, on implementing it, where all the communities feel comfortable. And I don't think the names community had much time to discuss about this issue. So we have suggested to have another call focusing on the intellectual property rights issues. And we also invite the IETF uh, representatives uh, on this call. So I think that's the general status of what we discussed uh, within CWG uh, chairs. And uh, Ronnie, if you have anything else to add from your side, then uh, please do feel free to do this. So I'm not seeing any hands. So I, do, does anybody have any questions uh, related to this? So when we just talk to the main uh, chairs, we clarify that we, it's based on Nirani and my observations, and we're not pre representing um, anybody um, anybody's behalf. While we are basically making comments on what is described on the members' proposal. Okay, thank you, Nirani, for confirming this. That um, my summary makes sense. Oh, I see hand from Nirani, please, uh, Nirani. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I uh, I just wanted to add as well uh, that, mm -hmm. that like, like you said, we're very clear about that this is not uh, input from the numbers community. It was simply our attempt to to analyse uh, um, the di potential overlaps and or differences between the proposal. Uh, and we also made it clear to them that we were going to submit comments through the public channel as well. Uh, and they were very happy about that because um, I guess it very hard for them to um, to do anything with, with the comments uh, unless they get it through the official channels. So we're very clear about that the, the communication is, is simply to kind of inform the two uh, groups rather than, um, yeah, than anything else. It's certainly not a decision-making uh, um, conversation uh, uh, in any way. So thanks. Yeah, thank you, Nurani, for this clarification because this is very important. We're not like making any decisions at the call, and I think uh, the the names chairs have been very cooperative and helpful and like uh, willing to share anything that they have. And uh, yeah, so I, I actually find this uh, dialogue to be very uh, constructive and helpful. Um, so I think we've covered on the meet the updating um, on the meeting with the CWG chairs. So maybe we, um, may I suggest to uh, do a little bit of wrap up uh, related to the meeting that we had with the general EC last week. Um, so one of the things that we actually discussed was exactly on the point that how we communicate on uh, related to the point on the termination and renewal of the SLA. The reason that this was discussed was it was discussed in the ISTAR meeting in London um, on the week and before this. And so there were some concerns expressed about the ease of termination on the SLA based on a proposal. So um, we have actually confirmed, tried to um, uh, share our view on what is um, happening now with the current arrangement between the NTIA and the ICANN, and how is this changed um, in our proposal. So I think what we have discussed is pretty much reflected in my response to, uh, to GAO on the second uh, question that I have shared, how we have replied earlier. And I have uh, forwarded this response to the NROEC as well. I mean, all, this, uh, all, all of this is archived and they can see it, of course. But I thought this, this is something that is worth uh, getting their attention so that we actually communicate uh, in a very uh, collaborative manner uh, as a numbers uh, proposal and we, we give like a, a consistent message related to this. So I feel like a lot of these concerns are based on misunderstanding about the current arrangement as well as the numbers of proposal. And so we really want to work on um, uh, 
you know, getting this message on to be accurately understood to the people outside um, the numbers community as well. So one of the things that um, Ronnie and I discussed was that it's probably helpful to put post our response to the GAO on the NRO website because I think this kind of response would be helpful, not just for the GAO, but you know anybody who's interested to understand more about a proposal. And it may be like worth adding this uh, point about the ease of uh, terminating and renewing the SR SRA on the FAQ that um, NRO secretariat is, uh, have fully compiled for us. Um, what do you think about this suggestion? Does anybody have any comments or concerns related to this? I see no hand, so I suppose people think this is an okay idea to move forward. So I would like to um, request uh, the NRO Secretariat to post a response on the GAO uh, on the NRO website, as well as extract the question that we got related to um, termination and um, and renewal of the SLA and reflect this on the FAQ page on the Chris team on um, the proposal on the NL website. Yes, no take and we'll do that as soon as Yes, please. Um, so I see noted uh, from NRO Secretariat, so um, thank you very much. Also, I'm sure if Tom wanted further clarification or just like you just noted. If it's just noted, so yeah, thank you very much. And uh, so this is all helpful that, um, and nice to confirm that this can be addressed. So um, if no comments are related to this, then I'd like to move to another point uh, related to discussions with the NLEC. Um, so we actually wanted to have more clarity on the role that we will be taking as the CRISP team and the role that RIRC will be taking uh, related to um, receiving feedback from, um, from the community on the SLA text. So we haven't really had like a, a good full time to agree on this uh, or well, actually discuss anything um, on this. But there's one point that's worth um, highlighting that we have agreed was that um, RIR uh, staff will do like a table of the feedback that has been received on the um, on the global numbers mailing list, and then like uh, um, write an observation on on how this is going to be reflected or addressed on the SLA. So exactly as how we have addressed the, the feedback from the, num, uh, from the community on the, um, from the numbers proposal that the team was compiling, we have um, actually, like, you know, I think uh, John himself has uh, put together a table of the comments and how we actually, like, have addressed each of these comments. Um, we are, um, it was felt that something similar to this on the SLA would be very helpful, and that um, um, it, would, it would be helpful if RIR staff um, from the Chris team can help us uh, do this. So, um, would people have any comments related to this? And uh, especially from maybe. Uh, Michael and um, I don't know who else from the RIR staff. Maybe Michael, you're the new one from the RIR staff. I, I don't know if you want to have any comments related to this or you just think this is uh, this direction is fine. No, I think that I think the direction is fine, and I'm sure we can we can fine tune it as we as we move forward. But I think I think handling it kind of similar to how we did with compiling comments before. And then um, trying to kind of focus that will be will be very helpful. And I'm sure that the RIR staff members on the Chris team, I'm you know working with with Craig and um, you know well essentially just all the RIR staff people can work together on this as well. And then we'll we'll focus it with the legal team, drafting team to take that feedback and and revise accordingly. Excellent. Thank you very much. I think this will, this is very helpful. And so. Um, I do see there are some uh, comments and questions that has that is now on the um, has been expressed on the global INA expert list, but nobody has like responded. Um, so, but 
maybe it may be the case that as long as we have this tabulated table on explaining how we respond to how we address each of these comments, we may not necessarily need to to respond to each of the individual emails. But this needs to be communicated clearly to the uh, on the global um, IANA list, so that the community knows that you know they're just not getting ignored and we're just like uh, trying to compile all the comments. So I, I would actually like to um, communicate this um, as early as possible um, within this week. Um, but we we probably want to be coordinated in um, in the message, so we we might want to. Um, to share that this is what we plan to do with the NROEC. So, um, so um, it's a suggested way forward. Maybe we can draw something as the team that uh, <coughs> this is how we we plan to communicate on the global list. And then before we actually post on the um, IANA global list, we we actually share this with the EC and then. Um, Post is, is how we handle comments on the global list this week. <coughs> Excuse me. So if this sounds um, okay with everybody, <coughs> may I first see if anybody is willing to draft this uh, message um, to the global list? Do, do we have any volunteers? Um, <coughs> I'm not saying in hand, so um, maybe I'll ask again on the mailing list, but uh, if no, no one is uh, volunteering, maybe this is something that um, I will draft uh, and consult um, Nirani as well, and then uh, we'll distribute this on the team list as well as the NLVT. Um, Okay. So, and then the uh, one more point that I would like to raise is um, how we will be um, addressing on the oh, hand from Narani. Please, Narani. Thank you, and, and uh, please also note the the comment made by uh, Michael saying that uh, he's happy to coordinate with our IR staff members to put something together that makes sense. Uh, I was that's that's helpful because I th I think in a way I'm, I'm happy to draft something but I think it would be nice if uh, I think it would be more appropriate if it comes from uh, one of the RIRs. Um, so I have nothing to add. Thank you, Michael. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much, Michael, and thank you, Nirani, for pointing this out. I, I missed this chat, and okay, it's very helpful. So. Thank you, um, Michael, for like uh, volunteering to do many things and also on, on this as well. So we will wait to hear from you on the message that uh, um, we want to communicate to the community then. So thanks again. And last point I'd like to cover is we are we as the Chris team is also expected to comment on the SLA. Um, uh, especially in comparison with the numbers proposal. So um, again, I would like to. Oh yes, yeah, so please, Nurani. Yes. Yeah. So I see a, a, a comment in the chat that you want to make a comment. Yeah. Shall I do it now, or shall I? I'm happy to do it at the end as well, if you want. If. Uh, okay, I'll do it now. Um, I just wanted to say that one of the, uh, I think one of the issues that we identified in the meeting with the NROEC was also really, um, well, what, what is even described, the, the, uh, the need for, for better coordination and communication, and that um, I think we, we want to be clear not only towards our community about who's, who has what role and what the steps are, but also in um, maybe we need to be a little bit clearer in explaining the workings of, of, of our community and some of the principles behind the proposals. Um, also as a way of, of instilling trust in the process, not only within our community, but, but in the broader community. 
And because we hear a lot of questions and a lot of uh, uncertainty and, and doubt in this process, I think by being a little bit proactive and um, clarifying the intention with some aspects of the proposal and explaining how the RIR um, communities work, we might actually be able to uh, prevent some of that um, that that worry or, or some of the the misinterpretations uh, of of um, um, of the proposal or how things work in, in the numbers community. So I just wanted to make that general point and it was not necessarily something that uh, we said uh, only the CRISP team should do or only the RIRs should do, um, but I think it's something that would be nice of us to, to jointly think about um, how we can do. Thanks. Very good point and um, important that we, we will work very closely with the NROEC from this step especially um, and we, we send like a consistent message and um, so um, thank you for pointing this out, Nilani. And uh, it's a sort of related point. We have actually requested for a regular meeting with the NROEC and the CRISP team are dedicated for this. So um, we hope to have a format where we, we can have the CRISP team members and the NROEC have, you know, ha have a call together. Like in the last meeting, it had been more like, you know, Nilani and I are invited in the NROEC call, but uh, on like as a part of the many agendas that we have, but they have agreed that it would be good to have a dedicated meeting between the NLEC and the CRISP team, so this is our one good thing. And uh, as an immediate uh, step, we, we haven't really fully agreed, well, not agreed, we haven't agreed because we haven't discussed um, about the role that the CRISP team and the NLEC uh, will be taking um, in, in, in details uh, other than what I, I have shared. So um, I think the Drew poll is now out um, for the suggested uh, next call, and I think Bo has suggested some additional alternative time. So I would like uh, like to leave this call to the NR Secretariat to to coordinate on the, the schedule. But I would like to encourage um, those who have received this uh, um, invitation to fill in the um, the poll. So that's, um, I think that's something that I'd like to, to highlight in relation to communication uh, between the Chris team and the NRC. And, um, and lastly, um, so we as the Chris team is also expected to uh, submit comments on the, um, on the SLA. So this is actually, really, I mean, this is something that we would have wanted to do this anyways, but this is being announced as something expected from the um, NRO as well. So I would like to um, ask for volunteers um, on who, um, on doing some analysis on what is described on the SLA and the, um, the numbers proposal and do some comparison and observe if there's anything that is that doesn't seem to be clearly clear enough and uh, any details that we think uh, maybe should be added uh, in spirit of a proposal. Um, so that um, may I ask for a volunteer first from somebody who is not um, in the RIR legal team and uh, it would be also helpful to have somebody from the RIR legal team to explain about the intention of the SLA and explain things from the implication from the legal perspective. So I would like to call for um, volunteer, two individual volunteers on this. So um, I will make a call on the mailing list. So it doesn't have to, we don't have to choose immediately from the people at the call right now. It's, it's not a must. But uh, if uh, anybody can um, give us an indication whether, like any, like any one of us who are at the call now is interested to or willing to volunteer, then that would be very helpful. So I'm not seeing any hand at this stage. So maybe you know we, we all need a little bit of time to think about it. And uh, so I will communicate this on the mailing list and call for the volunteers. So, and we'd like to actually like in terms of the timeline, uh, we actually don't have too much time. So um, 
we want to fix the volunteer within the coming um, 24 hours. Um, and then I'll start working on it. Um, so maybe I will also try to draft a rough timeline um, on how we want to do this uh, and then finally submit our comments uh, to um, NROEC. Yes, uh, John B. Thank you for your comment. The two remaining minutes will be better. And, uh, and timeline may be a deciding factor. Okay, thank you for the comments, uh, John B. and Andre. Okay, so I think um, I pretty much covered um, what I wanted to share at this meeting from my side. Um, but is there anything else that people like to um, to discuss? We do have um, roughly six minutes, a little more than six minutes. Thank you, Michael, as well, for your comments. That, um, Defer to somebody else. Um, to assist, but happy to volunteer if nobody else is available. Okay, thank you, Michael. So, um, no other comments or suggestions um, on what we would like to discuss. Then, I don't know the next call from the top of my head, but I think we have a, a next call, like a regular call. Um, Planned in this month. Um, I don't know if um, anybody from the NRO will be able to to help us confirm um, the next call, the schedule for the next call. I think it's in the week of the um, of the 25th of May. I think, um, but maybe we can actually send this out on the. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Nurani. So maybe we can just uh, like uh, uh, confirm the call of um, the date of the next call online as well. If nobody remembers this on the, from the top of the head, and it's much more clear, um, you know, to see this um, in writing. So <laughs> thank you, John B. As well. So thank you so much for you know joining us uh, despite this uh, quite um, uh, last-minute uh, um, invitation for the meeting, and thanks so much for your time. So um, keep you um, keep in touch online, and thanks very much, Michael, for agreeing to work on the draft to be submitted to the um, to the CWG uh, meetings. So so talk to talk to you all again, and um, and let's be engaged on the the comment to the C division. So bye for now. Okay, goodbye, Zuni. Thank you.